guys, I'm here just going over how to tape a paddle. We're gonna start today with a kayak paddle. First, what you're gonna do is you're gonna put the paddle together and then make sure that it's the correct height. For me, this is good. I What I do is I just stand it right in front of my toes and I make sure that the tips of my fingers are close to the edge of the blade. Every person is a little different, so um, it's not an exact science. Then what you're gonna do is figure out where to place your hands. Um, I recommend trying to keep your elbows at 90 degrees when you set it on top of your head. Um, I personally like my hands a little bit in more than 90. Some people like it exactly 90. Um, and it, every, again, everybody's body type is so different, but try to get as close to 90 as possible. Um, then what you're gonna do, you're gonna need to have a preference on where you want your um, your little nub to be, so to speak. I put I call it a little nub that you put so that your fingers can stay in place instead of sliding around the paddle as you're kayaking. Um, so what I do is I, I get some little tape to make place markers. So I have the tape ready. I put my hands at about 90 degrees where I like them and I make sure that this is as even as possible um, for my eyeball. And then I'm gonna place my tape on what, exactly where I want my nub to be. And I personally like them in between my peace fingers. So I'm gonna just place it right there where my peace fingers are gonna be. And then I'm gonna get my other little piece of tape ready to go after I uh, make sure I'm at 90 again. And I put it right where I think my piece fingers will be on this side. Um, after doing this, you definitely want to double check that you're even from the blade. So the middle of the paddle is hard to tell because of the way that they're manufactured. But what you can always make sure of is that from the edge of the, the, the blade where it's glued, you can see exactly how far your little placement is. So I'm going to, I'm about six inches from the edge. I'm gonna make sure it's the same over here. And it is not, I'm about like an inch off on either side. And so I'm gonna fix that. And then we're gonna start doing our taping. All right, so I fixed that. Now I'm even on both sides, it's between four and five inches um, to the place where I want my nub to be. Another way to put this is you wanna hold the paddle in the most powerful position that you do push-ups or your bench pull, your bench press. And so if you're on the water, you're near the water and you're taping your paddle, it's helpful. You can actually just test it out. And so put your, your just one little bit of tape where you want to put it and then go for a little paddle and see how it feels. Um, and also make sure that someone's watching you, hopefully a coach, and they can give you a little bit of advice on exactly where your hand should be. Um, next, I'm going to show you guys exactly how you can start taping the paddle. You're going to want to pull your paddle apart to make it the most simple. I recommend getting a uh, scotch tape. I'm not sponsored by them, but they just simply some of the best uh, brand I know of for electrical tape. That's what we use here. Um, what I like to do is I like to start, I only use one nub. Sometimes people have a nub that surrounds their hand, so one on the outside of their pinky and their pointer finger. But again, I said I like mine in between my piece fingers. So I'm gonna start on the inside of the paddle and then work my way out. Um, what I'm gonna do is give me a little little bit of space for my thumb to hold on to. I'll show you in a second what I mean. I start out just like this. I want to be able to hold it right here and so I'm gonna just have it a little wider so that my thumb can grip on something. And what you're gonna do is you're not gonna pull really tight so that the tape is stretched because over time it's gonna retract. What you're gonna do is just have it taut enough so that it is not gonna have any bubbles or anything like that. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna slightly angle the tape out so that it's constantly going towards the direction that you're headed. Um, the first one I start out kind of 
perpendicular so that there's not any jutting out edges just because of what it looks like. But then I start kind of pulling my hand sideways, if you notice. I'm not pulling straight out, I'm pulling my hand a little sideways and guiding it with my thumb. Here. And as you can see, there's a darker piece where it's overlapped. And I'm actually going to try my best to overlap right on that spot every time I go around. I'll show you what I mean in a second. Kind of like that. So I'm, I meet up on that line so that the rest of the paddle is going to be pretty consistent. This does not matter that much as long as you have that um, one layer of tape around. It's no big deal. It's just whether or not you want it to look pretty or not. <laughs> okay, so once you get close to this marker tape that I have right here, you can either remove it really quick because you know you have your spot or you can leave it. I'm just going to remove it really quickly. So I'm a bit of a perfectionist. So I'm going to go one more around. And now I'm at my spot. This is where I want my nub to be. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the tape out a little extra. And I'm, sh I'm just going to twist it. And it doesn't matter what direction you twist it. Um, doesn't matter too much how much you twist it. But you don't want to go crazy. You just need a little bit of, little bit of edge popping up. This is also a preference part. You can either do... Um, go around the paddle a few different times so that it's a really big nub or you could just do two or three. It's all based off of your preference. The bigger hands you have, the more of a bigger, the bigger the nub you want so that your hands aren't slipping around. Remember that's what it is. Of course your hands might get uncomfortable at first because of the new height of the nub. You'll develop new calluses, it'll be fine, but um, don't let that hold you back from having the, the height of the nub that you need. This is something you want to do very perpendicular, very straight. I don't recommend pulling it out too much at once because sometimes you just um, overestimate and then you have all this extra tape to unwind. The point is we want to have to, we want to do this in one bout of tape. We don't want to have to go back over this and cut piece and then go back over it because this electrical tape will just kind of come off after time. So after I just did one circle around and it's meeting up back to itself right here. I know personally that I like to have three little nubs. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to come and I'm going to choose to go on the left side here. Keep going. You want it pretty tight and close. You don't want to feel that um, separation. Sometimes the tape responds differently. So you're like, oh, this is a lot bigger than I thought. So you might even just choose to do two nubs or two, two rounds around. This honestly might be a little big for me, but we'll see. And then once you get back to the starting place, that's when you flatten the tape back out. So I just did all my rounds and I, I flattened it out and I go back over it, cover all that stickiness up. And then I start angling it out again. There's never a spot that you want the tape to miss overlapping. You want it to overlap a little bit every time you go around. So I'm gonna have to take it off a little bit like that and readjust it, it's okay. Once you get going again in that system that we had started, then you can just Continue finishing. Some people like to take this all the way to the blade. Some people don't want to waste that much tape. Some people like to go around the edge of the blade right here so as to not let any water seep in there in case the glue is damaged or anything. I'm doing this kind of fast for the video, but you can always clean it up and go slower. All right, so once you get to the length that you want, I recommend having scissors ready because when you rip it, it's not always pretty. And there you go. That is what it can look like for you when you take when you paddle, tape a paddle.
Um, I think that's all you need to know for today. And next time we'll go over how to tape a canoe paddle. Um, if you have any more questions or comments, just leave them on the YouTube channel. Click like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys later.